Hello folks, welcome back to the Man Cave, and as you can see, we have the Westwood in here. And I have a bit of a backstory on this, like I told you in the video yesterday. I actually rang the owner last night, or the previous owner, and um, so I'm still in touch with the guy. And I happened to mention that I still had this old mower, which he was amazed about, because I got it off him in 2004, and he said, I can't believe that's still down yours. And I said, came when it last ran? He said, I'll tell you exactly when it last ran. He said, that was the first season I moved into the house. And he bought the house in 1998. So this mower packed up, or the back axle went on it in 1998. So that is what, 23 years ago? So, um, yeah. All we're going to do today is see if I can break it free because it is it was seized up in 04 when I got it and I'm going to take the tin work off and hopefully see if we can get this thing freed off. I'm going to put it in a John Deere because the engine out of that John Deere I showed you yesterday is here in bits. I bought it like this so I'm going to disassemble the engine and oh broken Conrad. Bits of Conrad big end. Ooh, I seem to have gained a 24 mil deep socket. Excellent stuff. Wow, that sweetened the whole deal. It is a shame the cover is missing off the top of the fuel make it happen. But and whatever go on there, I think that's meant to be a voltage regulator. Probably what these wires are here for. Yeah, I think that's a voltage regulator to stabilise your voltage when you're charging. But that's missing. How many bolts have we got to get this cover off? Let's have a look. One, two. And will these bolts? Three. Four, five. Yes, I reckon that cover will come off there quite easily. Because we've got to have this cover off. Then we can suss what's going on. Right. And I bet none of these buggers are open. God. Right, I think first thing to do is get the plugs out. And get that tinware off. So let's get the old camera here set up in my tripod. There we go. There we go. Several of you have said you're looking forward to this one, so let's crack on. I say in my normal style, I won't be doing a lot of editing. So if you get bored, you'll have to skip forward a few minutes. What size are these bad boys? They are tens. Right, let me get some duck oil and give that a squirt first. <clears throat> it always helps. I can't believe the state of this thing. Uh, is there another bolt there anyway? No, that's the cylinder under there. One there, one there, one there. And that'll be... Oh my word. That'll be the same as one there. One there. So I say our method, our mission today is really to see if we can free this thing off. Get the covers off, blow it out, free it off. And that'll tell me if I'll be able to use this engine or whether I'm wasting my time. Oh, it's a shame these end covers, the paint has totally gone off them. All right, we'll give her a bit of dark oil. I'll bet you these are gonna ring off as well. I'm not gonna tempt fate, I'm gonna heat them just a little. Let's see if we can get some, oh, bloody hell. Because if these ring off, we're in a world of hurt. Come on. Hey. I don't believe it, I'm coming undone, look. All them years are sitting there. I wonder if they would have undone coal. I'll try one coal and just see. I often find when they've been sitting a long time, I ain't going to touch them at the minute because they're hot. 
Oh yeah, they're coming undone tall. Look. Oh, where did that bastard go? You always drop one, don't you? Oh well, I'll find it. No, I don't know where that one went. I'll find the bugger. Come on, come on. No, that one is tight. Well, we've got a fire on our hands. Come on. Oh, bugger, that's gone. I had a feeling it might. Yep, I had a feeling some of these might snap off. Oh, we can deal with that when we get to it. Oh, he's cold off yet. Oh, yeah. get that big bolt in the back there. I don't think they're cover bolts. I was hoping we could just get these end covers off. Oh, these ones are coming undone easy enough. Tell you what, I'm going to pause this while I undo these. If not, you're just going to be totally bored. Back in a minute. Right, we're back again. I've got all the bolts out. They're all on the top there. And I'm now taking the plugs out. <coughs> and hopefully these tins will come off. There's one bolt. We'll hold this side cover on. That's right behind the dipstick. And can't get to. I've unbolted the dipstick, but that is absolutely rigid. So whether that's got to come out the bottom of the engine, I'm not sure, but. That's just one little bracket, so I can probably bend the cover around. So our goal for today, this is not really a bodge, it's just really to um, get the heads off this thing and see if we can actually... Them plugs don't actually look too bad. A little bit sooty, but... They look like they come off a running engine. I mean, the guy did have showed me this ran, but just sat through season up. <clears throat> All right. Oh, Need a tub here to put all my bits in. Gotta put all your bits safe. There we go. Yep. So that's all the bolts, for it, which can sit in there. Now, will these covers? Oh, as they bend back, trying to get the heads off. Oh my God, look at the state of that. All right, let's see if the other side one come off. Why have I left the bolt in? No, nope, that one's a come off, look. Will the top cover come off? Hey, we have wires. Which I soon push out. Oh, look at that. Excellent stuff. Here's our top engine cover. Oh, we have a coil. Now, how are we going to see if we can free this off? Now, because this engine hasn't been turned for so long, I don't just want to put a bar on this flywheel and um, belt it, because, you know, if the, if the rings or pistons are a bit stuck, I'd rather whip the heads off and squirt some penetrating oil in there and maybe give it a bit of heat. And then I'm not going to hit on them flywheel teeth, because I don't want to damage it. Ah, some balance holes on there. I think I can put a bar on there and give them a knock with a hammer. But first job, let's get these heads off. So we've got the Ratley gun. Let's put our 13 mil on there. I know Americans need a half inch, but we're in the UK here. Yeah. We go metric here. Oh, he's 
going on, so far. Yep, all the bolts are the same length. Unless this one here is a bogus one, no, all the same. And we put them in our little tub. So let's get the Tony Hard note and see if we can get the head off. Oh hang on, I left one in here, look. I have left one in here. Ah, no Tony Hard needed. Right, we have the head off. What does it look like? Whew. Don't look too bad, apart from these cobwebs. You know, it's got a valve slightly open. Yeah, it's, that don't look... It's on top dead centre. That don't look terrifically bad. So I think... And valves are actually, there's very little carbon in this engine, but when you wire it up, so I guess this is an old machine. Ah, our head gasket, which actually looks good. I mean, I will replace if I'm going to use this engine, but, but when you wire it up, this machine's been off the road since 98, so if this machine is, say, 92, it's actually only done six years' work. That's what you've got to look at. Yes, it's old, but it's done nothing for over 20 years. So, by that method of thinking, this, this bolt, this head here, this piston should be right down this side. No, nope, that's right at the top as well. What's going on? I suppose twin, yep, beg your pardon. My mistake. But looking at these head gaskets, I don't think she's had any head gasket problems. I mean, the gasket looks half decent. Both sides, so we could probably, there's a bit of crud around there on the edge, carbon build-up. Well, I think the first thing to do, get a bit of heat on these pistons. You're not going to hurt them. you just got to think of what the, what the head temperature is inside these when they're actually running. So this will do no harm at all. I just want to get a little bit of heat in them. Before I start knocking on that flywheel to try and free this thing up. We just want to get a bit of heat in the cylinder. I just heard a click there. I just heard a click. Let's go do the other side. I'm not going to show you this side because that's just the same as that side. So, if anything, there's a little bit of oil on this cylinder, but that's all. Okay, boys. So we're 
bit of heat in her and see if we can do anything. Pistons are cleaned up. Unbelievable. There is no carbon. I'll get the camera down and you've seen yourself. There's no scrubbing gone on. I have my wipe a little bit of carbon off my finger. You would not believe how them top of them pistons have come up. And we'll just when you put penetrating oil on, on a hot part as well, it naturally thins the oil causing it to run down. This being a horizontal twin, you can't just put it on top of the piston and let gravity help you, because it won't. Well, we've given this the best chance we've got, so I think... Ah, look, look. Is that a little bit of movement in the flywheel? There's a little bit of movement in the flywheel already. You know, I think... We come around this side. If my mate has stitched me up here and this has got a broken rod. Right. So this piston here is on the downstroke. Have I got a little bit of wood? Oh yes. this cover come off? Just pull off. That just pulls off, right. I think the problem is on this other cylinder, this side, pretty sure that's where the issue is. But of course, that piston's virtually top there centre. You don't want to bang it too much because you don't want to risk. Hey, look at that. Look at that. Excellent. She's free. All right. Before we start running them rings up and down. Oh, this is brilliant. And the cylinder walls are actually got a film of oil on them still. This is great news, folks. Great news. Right. Let's get the old air line out. And my rag. Wipe these cylinders out. Then I'll get you down here close up. To look in them cylinders. I can tell you now, I'm very, very hopeful for this engine. Very hopeful. There is a rust ridge right at the top there where something sat, but it's an upwards ridge. Not all round, it's just on this end. That's where it was seized, that little bit on the end there. But I don't think that's going to cause us too much grief. Let me get a smidgen of... A smidgen of um, 
paper and just see if we can get that off. Now I know you guys are going to be like, oh you shouldn't put sandpaper in a cylinder. <clears throat> well, officially no, I don't suppose you should. But we're not going to the moon in this thing, it's just a lawnmower. Sorry Tarot. Well, yep, yeah, that's all gone. That was a simple... Oh, look at that. That was a simple little rustridge. Simple as that. Nowhere. Yep, that is all gone. There was just a little bit of crap sitting on there. Which was causing this engine to sit still. Perfect. There we go. Well, let's get you down there, folks, so you can actually see in there a bit better. You can see in that cylinder. There's no ridge on there at all now. It is dead smooth. But that was where the problem was. That little bit of crap was there, which had caused the engine to seize where that little rust ridge come. But believe me, that is... And whether you can see it, I'm trying. There is no ridge there at all. That is just dirt. But there is no ridge there at all. You can hear my nail. No ridge at all. Let's come around the other side to the cylinder I haven't even touched. <clears throat> so you can see what she's like in there. There we go. Excuse the bad light. Ah, there you go, I can put a flash on. There you go, that's what the cylinder looks like. Originally. There's a tiny little ridge down the bottom here again. And I think that must have been... Let's peep in the back of them valves. She might need a valve job. There you go, get focus. There we go. She might need a valve job, but all I want to do is see if this thing will run. If it does run, then I'll go to town and strip it down a bit more and give it a good clean up. And, you know, I'll probably do other bits and pieces. But, right, what do you think now, guys? Do I leave the video here and say, yeah, it's unseized? Or do you want to see me go a bit further and take this starter off and see if we can, well, I can tell you straight away, that starter motor is. Well, look at that, even the Bendix is free on it. I'm not even sure we need to take that starter off. I was going to take the starter off to see, to free it up, but that's actually, and it's quiet, listen. Up and down movement, the bearings sound good. I reckon oil this Bendix up. Oh, it's got metal Bendix on it as well, look. So I'm going to blow these teeth off now, oil this Bendix up. And I wonder, if we get a spark out of this bad boy, I reckon we're in business. Now, I'm not saying for one minute that the ignition on this is going to work. Where is the ignition switch even? Ah, the ignition switch is gone. Right, I'm not going to pretend for one minute that this ignition switch will actually work. So, um, I'm assuming this white wire here is a kill wire. So when you put that to ground, that stopped the engine. So in theory, if we pull him off without breaking it, there you go. So in theory, when we is that a kill wire? Yeah, I'm guessing that's a kill wire on the coil. 
Look at that. Have we got a good gap? Perfect air gap, so I shan't piss about with that. All right, let's give this a little blow off with the compressed air. And let's see. Let's see what's going on. Then I'll duck oil that starter motor. Excuse me. Yeah, we'll duck oil that starter motor and then I shall have to just come around here with a battery and jump blades and see if it goes. So let's get the duck oil going. Yes, I do love duck oil. I like it a lot better than WD-40. I don't know why, I just... Oh, that Bendix is... Slack as a hooker's underwear. I love it. There we go. <laughs> Brilliant. Yep. That Bendix is perfect. Right, guys. I will go get a battery and some leads and we'll see if... Well, see what happens. Back in a minute. So here I am, got a battery, I'm tight so I've just wire brushed the old plugs up on the bench grinder, I've got a set of jump leads here, so we're just going to, Jesus, have I got a big enough set of leads here, Christ. Now, I don't know whether this battery's any good. That's one I grabbed out of the shed. So, I'll get the old battery tester and see if we've got anything in that battery. Let's have a look. Oh, Christ, yeah, we've got something in the battery. Battery tester complete. So, let's crank him on the head. So, we've got an earth on the head. I want to put my... Where's that other coil wire? Here it be. Now I know you're going to go with your hoping. What is this? Ah, there's a little, this bit of tin work come out of here, look, marble stuff. Okay, now where are we going to earth this? Because we want to hold this plug somewhere where we're going to get a good earth. Will that wedge in? Ah, it's wedged in, right, that's one wedged in. Thing with magnetos, in case you didn't know this, you should never turn an engine over without your magneto connected to a um, connected to a spark plug or a ground. And I'll tell you for why. When that turns over, um, whatever, it's generating a spark in there. It's generating high power in this coil. Now, if that's got nowhere to go, like jumping over these electrodes or jumping to earth, it's going to jump across itself in there. Don't do any harm short term, but in the long term, it won't do it a lot of good. There you go, what two plugs wait. Let me move the camera down onto this plug. Oh, I've got some mint camera skills here, guys, as I have to retract the legs on the tripod. Do apologise, but I want you fellas to get a good look to see if we've got a spark. Can we zoom in a bit? That's zooming out. Ah, there we go. Right. Oh, I shall be around the other side. Let's see if this thing will actually spin over. Or am I just getting very excited here for no reason? I don't know. Look at that. Sparking. Did 
Did you see that, fellas? We have a spark. Unbelievable. Something didn't sound very good, but... Ah, there's a bit of tin going on to the... Ah! I was wondering what that noise was. That's a little bit of tin work where I've wedged this plug in. There you go. That had pushed a little bit of tin work onto that flywheel. So... Hopefully now that should turn over a bit quieter. Take two. Just to satisfy you that that's nothing wrong. It was just a... There you go. We have a perfect spark. Do we leave the video here? Or do you guys want to see me just... Give it a little... Of ether down there. See if we can get a fire off. Yeah, let's do that. All right, let me get this camera back over here. Let's zoom out to two trees. And let's bang these heads back on. I know you're saying, oh, you should put new head gaskets on. Well, if I'm going to use this engine, I will. But for the purposes of this video... I'm just going to clean everything up and put it back together how it is. So let me just clean these heads up and, you know, clean the, say, my, the mating surface up. Then we'll get these heads back on. You don't want to see me do all this. These are a bit, they aren't bad actually. I mean, a lot of that's coming off of my finger. Right, back in a minute, guys. Right, all's cleaned up. So before I put this head on, I'm just going to squirt a little bit of engine oil in this bore and rub it round with my finger. So when this engine fires off for the first time, yes, it's going to smoke a little, but it'll have a nice little film of oil. So... Right, we'll give the old head a bit of a clean up. So we're just going to put him on. And see how it goes. I'll be back in a minute, guys. So, folks. I've got these head bolts in here loosely. You can see the head's still loose. I'm, no, don't worry, I'm not going to rattle these up. Just going to take the slack out of them. So I'm not, I'm not tightening them at all. This is just to get the slack out of the thread. Really gentle with it. Right, now we're all there. Now I can torque them up. Let me just get my torque wrench. Where, oh where is it? There it is. My torque wrench. Just called a half inch ratchet. These want to be about 26 foot pound. So we'll go first stage. Second. Third. I'm just going over these in a cross pattern and then I'll give them a final talk down once I think I've got them tight enough. So I think that one was, so let's do 26 foot pound. Click, click, talked. Click, click, talked. Click, click, talked. Click, click. Click, 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 
click click you like that don't you i say it's just a lawnmower we're not going to the moon in this thing let your arm be your guide and the money the last thing you part with it's all you've got to remember oh more mint camera skills so I do these videos all alone and when you see this video on the internet it will be the day I actually do it because I tend to do my videos and I tend to post them on the same day I film them I'm not one of these people that spend two days editing all I do is <clears throat> All I do is I put the video through Action Director to put my title on there and my outro and put my fancy little fade-ins from one to the other. Click, click. 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 That's about 26 foot pound. These are quite a towel. I mean, this ratchet is about a foot long. So you just want to put 26 pounds of pressure on the end of it, really. I say, if this was a Formula One car, you would understand it, but it's a lawnmower. It'll be fine. It'll be absolutely fine. Right. Let's. There's the candidate from the last video. This one I got running in 15 minutes. So let's now put spark plugs back in this thing. And I think we're going to give her a turnover and a squirt of ether. See if we can get this thing far off, because that would be amazing if we could. Considering she's been sitting for, say, 23 years. 23 years, guys. 1998 this last, 1997, sorry, 1998 this last start. That's a hell of a long time. Some of my viewers probably weren't even born then. So it's amazing, really. And I don't know what the time is now, but I started filming this video at quarter past midday. Quarter past twelve, I pulled this mower in here. Yes, I have cut a bit out while I've... Took a bit of tin work off and bits and pieces, but you can only add, a, you only need to add about 20 minutes on to the length of this video. That'll tell you what, how long it's taken me to get this thing heads off and running. So there's one plug on. It's amazing this thing sparked, I'm amazed at that. I thought that coil might have gone bad after all these years, but no. The coil wasn't bad. So I want to make sure all these wires are out the way of the fly wheel. Now I'm just going to nip and get my tin of uh, easy start. I'm not sure where it is. Let me go find my easy start and then tell you what I'm going to do. So people don't think this is fixed. I'm going to put that on there. So if that's moved, you'll see that I've attempted to start it off camera, but I'm not going to. There you go. Just so you guys trust me a bit more. Right. I'm going to go and get some easy start and see if this thing will fire off. Back in a minute. Right. We're back again. As you can see, they ain't been moved. <clears throat> so, what I got here, I got some easy start and a little bit of petrol in a squirty tub. And we can hopefully bottle feed this thing off this here fuel maker happener under here. So, let's get an earth back on the engine. We should that earther on this cylinder head if that'll hold on. There you go. Right. 
we'll see if we can bottle feed this old girl. This is the throttle. Oh, fuck. Well, look at that. One thing I didn't check the throttle. That's actually free, look. Would you believe it? The throttle is actually free. We ought to just give everything a little lube up. Is the choke working? Oh, look at that, the choke even work. Unbelievable. Right. Let's give this puppy a little bit of fire, see what happens. I think I need to fill that carb bowl up with petrol and we might be in with a better chance but that's hopeful I think she's gonna go so folks I'll put a bit of fuel line on the carb and put it on my bottle so I'm just gonna sit my bottle up there and hopefully Packle pipe is not very successful on that. That's too big a pipe. This is 10 mil pipe and we really want 8 mil. So I'm just going to try and fill that bowl up and see if she comes. I think with all the stuff I've squirted in there, we've probably flooded it. And that pipe is not really very successful. That's a bit too big. Let's pop the plug out. But it is looking very hopeful for the old girl. Very, very hopeful. I just think I'll probably pump too much stuff in it. She's flooding.
let's see what state our plugs are in. They're actually bone dry, look. So, yep, actually bone bloody dry. So what's it going on? Maybe we've got a blockage in the inlet manifold, because this was open. It's possible a mouse has got in there and had a tea party over the years and blocked out the inlet manifold. So we might have to buzz the manifold off and have a look. Right. Like I say, that plug was bone dry. Nip this other one out and have a look. I bet when this poor old mower, about 26 hours ago, that sat under that hedge out there, and I bet that never for one minute thought, this time tomorrow, they're going to be trying to start me. Right, this plug is sod and wet. So we've got a dry plug that side, and a wet plug this side. So what's it going on? This cylinder has definitely, definitely got something in it. We'll see, won't we? I ain't gonna squirt nothing in this cylinder. Well, I say, we've definitely got a spark. She's definitely trying to fire. So I think once the fuel system was sorted, took off and cleaned, it would run. I guess I'm just being too impatient. Some compression. I think half of this is my battery's nearly flat. a little bit dead pretty sure that's what half of our problem is this battery ain't too hot she's not quite spinning her over fast enough one more go then we call on it a day She actually ran. Pah, just in the nick of time. There was an awful noise coming from it. I reckon there was something catching on there. But, yep, yeah, we caught it on video. She actually started. First time in 20 odd years. Oh, this is amazing. 
Yeah, absolutely amazing. I think that bottom... Ah, there's a belt still on the bottom pulley. Yeah, I reckon that belt was trying to turn that dodgy axle and that's what was making that noise. I ought to just um, snip that belt off, really. But no, there you go, folks. She runs. Oh, fuck me, that stink. Oh. There you go. So, I'm going to end this video here because you guys are going to be bored. There you go. The Crawler 18 horse. She come to it. Years and years and years of sitting about. She's finally there. So, let's call it a day. I will edit this video tea time. And then I will post it about half past eight tonight. Which is hopefully about the time you'll watch it. So, I shall see you next time and... Haha, <laughs> come back for part three of the cola. Bye-bye for now.